So I sat down this morning to have a look at my emails and I saw that Changelog Weekly was out. I'm a little bit behind on reading up on all this stuff, but I do like it and like there's a real there's a lot of useful inform like Changelog is probably my favorite newsletter when it comes to programming. So I was looking through the topics here and I see that this one is interesting. Kotlin on the on the rise with Kotlin or on the rise of Kotlin. It's Kotlin is like is one of my favorite newcomers in the programming world right now. I mean Kotlin is just I've, I've gone through their documentation and made some stuff with it. It's it's just amazing. I mean holy shit I wow. Swift and Kotlin, I mean the syntax is amazing and the fact that Kotlin is interoperable with Java is just great so I'm really looking forward to have a look at what Joe Kuttner, I hope I, ex I said that correctly, uh, what he thinks is like what's his favorite stuff about Kotlin but like I can give you, I, uh, I'm gonna be really biased now and just say that my absolute favorite thing with this, uh, with Kotlin is it's actually it's a little bit connected to the reason why I love Swift and the fact of the matter is that you have these two compiled languages that have a lot of the functional principles that are getting really popular. They have a very effective nice question mark syntax for denoting like optional values that may or may not be null, default parameters and like yeah just check these things. So if you haven't looked at Kotlin or Swift, have a look at them because I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say that like just let C sharp and Java die gracefully. Let them be completely washed out of our ecosystem and just keep them away from modern day development. Start looking at these languages. I'm pretty sure that these two languages will have a significant impact on how we're gonna write like corporate level, enterprise level code going forward. <clears throat> so the future of querying JSON in Postgres, not so interested in that. And sponsored content, no thank you. Rails, no, not interested in Rails. Oh, this one, yeah. How to build an online presence as a junior developer. Now, I wouldn't say, like, well, it depends on who you're asking, but I wouldn't call myself a junior anymore. I've been programming for a few years now. Like, I still have, like, a million things to learn. Of course, I'm, you're never done. But I actually cheated a little bit before I started making this, and you, uh, you, I'm going to just be completely honest and say the reason why I'm starting to do these things is actually very simple. I watched this video and I was just completely blown away by how like inspiring this was. So go and check it out. Document don't cr cr don't create. That's actually what initiated this entire video and uh, I'm thinking that, you know, I have this initiative I'm trying to get started where like I have a few videos where I teach JavaScript and web-based programming. I also started uh, making a video series where I solve Stack Overflow questions and videotape them. Talk a little bit about my like my mindset and my process, how I solve these problems. And if I completely you know fuck it up and I can't solve it, then yeah, I'll still put it out on the air so that you can see that hey, you know. I fuck up m more. I you know, I would even like to say more than the average programmer, and still somehow people think that what I do is pretty good. Uh, I hope so, anyway. Uh, let's actually watch this together. I'll watch it one more time with you because I thought it was that inspiring. So here we go. Document versus create. People aren't starting. They're just not making. They're thinking, they're pondering, they're strategizing, they're debating. A lot of people look at finished products. They look at LeBron today. They look at Kobe today. They look at Beyonce today. You know, the difference between understanding who you are versus who you wish you were. I mean, if you want to be respected and really known, show the fuck up. Enough listening, start doing shit. Don't be scared, and if you're scared, find somebody who's not scared, make them your partner. Like it's action, it's going, it's doing. And if you're passionate about something, 
In your world, you can make a big difference. You've got to pump out content. Wine Library TV work. And Steve, I look like a hostage in Iraq. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Wine Library TV. But here's where people that pump out content make a mistake. They care about the camera and the lighting and all that other horse crap. It means nothing. Everything I believe in was not possible five years ago. Anybody can get in the game and talk about the things they love the most, build a business around their passion. Hello everybody, this is Gary Vaynerchuk and this is my 120. Hey everybody, it's Gary Vaynerchuk, GaryVaynerchuk.com. I'm playing with airtime, not really, it's down right now. You know, that's the whole promise that we never believed before, which was do what you love. You always heard, do what you love, but you won't make as much money. You know, the game has changed. You know, we talk about all these products. Don't be scared to be multi-dimensional. You're not unfocused. You know, nobody in this world should define who you are. You can be so many things. You can crush it doing video blogging and you can crush it doing blogging. I mean, it just comes down to what are you good at? I think that's been turned on its head. Do what you love and you'll probably make more money than you could ever imagine. I think it's much smarter for you to talk to the world about your process of going through this than the advice that you should think you should be giving them. I think documenting your journey on Medium, your own personal blog, YouTube. The Ice Bucket Challenge. Bring it, Nate. I know you're gonna love this. Holy Whoa! SoundCloud, Anchor, you know, on and on and on. Snapchat, on and on and on. Hey guys, uh, I know I look like the Emperor from uh, Star Wars right now, but I'm not. Of you going through this journey, I mean, it would be really cool to have content right now about when Vera Wang started learning, like literally learning how to, how to create a dress, right? We are sitting where the gatekeepers are no longer in control. Guys, I was in my office in the dirty jurors, right? And I started taping Wine Library TV. One of the great things about Daily V is that D-Rock's around a whole lot and some things are obviously gonna be for the show, but sometimes things come along that can stand alone and you need to be thinking about documenting more than you need to be thinking about creating. What do you think the appeal is of the daily daily show, daily beat? I think that I wish I documented all my truths to this level because all the people that think I was smart about Twitter, they don't even know how much. And I think this will do that. Why do people always say stick to wine? Stick to what you know, stick to science, stick, stick to cooking. Why do we always want other people to stick to? I don't want to stick to crap. You know what I want to stick to? I want to stick to what makes me happy and what I want to execute again. You know, that's what I want to do. You didn't think it was true that they were 15, 16 hours a day. You thought they were hyperbolized and they were eight or nine. You didn't realize every minute was something. You didn't realize that it's every day. I wish I did this seven years ago. I wish you got to see the last seven years. Every minute, every day, always, forever. The world is changing, we're more connected, and your legacy, your maneuvering, your decision-making process has to start at your long-term legacy. Big picture always wins. If you're pumping out good shit, people will follow. But if you for a second, a half a second, don't believe in what you're doing, whether it's your personal brand or the product you represent, you need to get out now. And always think of the big picture, the legacy. Who are you going to be viewed at when it's all said and done? If I actually, from where I started, go on to buy a $4 billion sports organization and I documented the entire journey, my words are motivating and I'm good at that. But the reason I do Daily V and the reason I'm documenting so much is if I can put out a body of work 40 years from now that showed the process of a young man that put in the work, had the vision, did it the right way, tried to help people along the way because he was trying to build the biggest building in town by building it, not by tearing everybody else's buildings down. And then I actually accomplish it? Well that becomes a real, a real, a real great American dream story. And this is why I want to build a massive business because I want to teach the world that you can build a billion dollar empire on good. Like there's no reason this, this, this unfortunate narrative that affected a lot of my friends of Steve Jobs, like it became the move to be a dick because you're gonna get the best work out of people. I'll tell you right now, I'm 40. So far, here's what I got for you. People work way better when you deploy honey than vinegar. I've gotten much better work out of people because they're guilted to let me down versus being scared of me. Get the fuck out of here. You 
you should start a pillar show, whether it's, I mean, vlogging I think is very fascinating. You know, you should be doing Instagram stories and Snapchat stories at scale. You should be putting out seven to 25 pieces of content on both those platforms a day. And let me explain how. Don't go fancy. Document versus create. It's a big, it's a big shift. When I say seven to 25, you say, my God, how do I produce seven to 25 meaningful things that will have me respected? Versus document. You gotta put out stuff. And you, and you gotta fabricate it. Like, when you're, like, I still can't believe how many people that live in New York don't use New York people. If I were you, and I had an hour right now, go in the fucking park right, right now, like, I don't know, like, go back to your basketball route, stand outside the garden right there and be like, what do you think about the Knicks upcoming season? Yeah, interview four people, one person gets into a thoughtful conversation, he was the former ball boy in 1957, it's a nice story, and boom. You see where I'm going? People aren't starting. So you can't create? distribute. There's no excuse for not talking to the world. It just doesn't have to be your thoughts and words every time. My friends, the key to content success is you've got to start documenting instead of creating. Let me tell you how to start. Well, uh, it gets me as much as the second time, uh, the second time around. And because I'm a little bit of a wuss, I actually get a little bit misty-eyed when people are this inspiring. So, hope you, well, I enjoyed it anyway. So, I'm also looking at this stuff here. Uh, top best, uh, five best free video editing software for YouTube. And I decided to start using this, what is it? It's called... Yeah, shot, uh, shortcut. So I'm gonna have a play with that after I finish reading this article about Kotlin, and yeah, let's just finish off this little list here. Du -du -du -du. I saw one that I wanted to talk about. Yeah, this one. Why Angular 2 and 4 is too little too late. So the future of UI development belongs to React and other lightweight JS frameworks like Vue. This guy here, I haven't actually read this, it's going to be really interesting because he is, like I would even go one further and say the view is uh, just, you don't, just don't even bother. Like, Angular, I started out my first, at my first job, I started out as a full stack developer and the stack we used was Angular 1 and Node.js for the server side. I, we also had some .NET in there, but we started out that way. And I can tell you right now that I have never ever, like I, I had to start using React to understand how bad Angular 1 is. It is, it is a horrible, horrible framework. It At the time I was like, you know, I was still in school and I was still hyped up about all the you know, oh, it's Google. Google released this amazing thing, right? And they, they you know, Google like, is the biggest company in the world, or uh, arguably the most powerful company anyway in IT. And, uh, you know, everybody got on the bandwagon, and I started using it, and I thought, you know, I told myself, oh, this is really good. And then I started actually getting some, you know, the project started to grow, and we realized that, yeah, this is not gonna work. And I had this process happened to me over and over and I saw other people having this problem. I will even say to this day I can tell how much you've used this framework by just looking at how many times you use a scope reference. And in essence uh, the the story about this is that I we actually fucked up the code base to the point where like by the time I was leaving the company I was so happy that I was moving to Ticketmaster and they used React and I was really excited about it. I was actually a little bit crit like uh, like I kind of avoided React to begin with because I didn't I didn't understand the mindset that Facebook had when they made it but when I got it like I today I have a few like yeah I'll show you just very briefly I have a few slides that I made or a presentation. I actually did them here in Gothenburg. Let's see here. What React? Ticketmaster tools of the trade. Things React has taught me. Yes. 
So this was my first ever slideshow that I made and I presented it here in Gothenburg. I'll just very briefly walk you through this one. So in essence the the idea was that I, when I started using React I realized how powerful not just the framework because the framework is like it's very useful and it's gonna help you a lot but the most powerful part about it is the way that you think about GUI development today uh, you, or I mean this practice is it's not new in any way but the idea of having like small interchangeable bricks or I like to call them Legos that you can you can just you create this small piece of functionality that can be plugged in anywhere and then you build another one and another one and another one and finally you get this amazing like you, you get more and more complexity like exactly like a Lego system you start with small bricks and you create bigger and bigger stuff and then you you know you put them together and you create an entire like city of Legos or whatever and the, that that's in essence what this talk was about and the, this concept for those of you who have been doing this for a while can kind of understand it's the you know it's the functional way or the way that you think about functional programming oh yeah and Scott Vlashin I don't I actually don't know how to pronounce his last name but this is probably the best tech talk in the history of tech talks like it is absolutely amazing and this book is also amazing for those who like functional programming and basically, yeah, this was the 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 crescendo, or like the the end message, and that is that you know functional programming and these pro principles, React is actually popular popularizing these. I mean, functional programming has been around for a long time, but I believe and I that React is the first modern framework, certainly in JavaScript land, that has made this much of an impact on the community. So. What, what what I'm going with here is that the like the the idea that Angular after releasing Angular one and then realizing that shit we need to patch and fix all these problems that our the community is having in Angular two where like the, the difference is big enough that you know you have breaking changes immediately and then they, they, re they release like you know they are, they're up to version four and I actually stopped paying attention after version 2 because I kind of got I, I saw where they were going and I saw that right now they're trying to play catch up to react like they're never go I'm sorry but they're never gonna catch up with react it's the community is massive and the like I mean react is or they're they're already they are they got their interface almost perfect on the first few iterations there are a few things that have changed but for the most part they got it pretty perfect that they're actually not that they're not even about improving the development experience they already kind of got that down now they're talking about like performance optimization they're talking about like moving react over to react native and like doing all kinds of all the cool stuff with this interface and you kind of have to respect how much thought must have gone into this because if you're telling me that you are confident enough in your APIs and your interfaces for your framework that you can actually port it over to other platforms and still have people love it. I mean, that's just amazing. Just think about it. It's like, it's it, it's in essence a system that is so well designed that if HTML had had that type of thought in, put into it, we would be using HTML for every single, like for native application, for everything. We would be using it everywhere, right? And so how in the world honestly is angular going to beat this i mean they're even trying they are they're getting to a point where they kind of look similar to react so i mean if you're i i would even go as far as to say that if you are telling me that you 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 did your research you've been working professionally as a developer for a while and you said well you know well react is great but we went with angular anyway i i call bullshit I call absolute bullshit. If you went with Angular when you had this choice to do React, then you made an emotional choice. You didn't choose it because it's the best thing around. You choose, chose it because you wanted to. Same thing goes for uh, Vue. So Vue has nowhere near the type of backing power and development power and support that React has. Like, not even by a long shot. And you're telling me that you went with that instead of Vue sorry with view instead of react once again i call bullshit you didn't do that because you did you made a decision for what's best for the project you did that because you prefer view 
there is nothing that would can uh, that indicates that view is easier to learn or anything it's not more before it's not going to be more performant it's not going to give, i mean it has a much more limited amount of developers to contribute contributing and like they don't have facebook's enormous budgets that backs the project i mean they facebook is heavily investing in react so how is view ever going to compete with that like Facebook has more money than God and you're telling me like I'm not saying that that means that they're gonna make a really great framework but I'm saying that they already have like Jest and all these other supporting frameworks and they like in essence it, it feels to me that React is trying to pretty much build the new world for UI and front-end development so yeah that's my th my little rant about frameworks and to summarize if you're going with a, if you have experience with all three and I do angular view and react and you tell me that you show something else than react then I argue that you did that not because it's the best choice but because you have some emotional or non non logical world. you might uh, you might have started the, the my, maybe the project did I you know maybe angular was the thing that you you arrive at this project and you didn't have a choice maybe you had to do angular because the company you're working for or the project you were you're working on already had angular you don't want to migrate and I respect that I mean that's that's the way the work the world works and it's also important to remember that when you make a decision especially like when I'm getting into my career now it's like I'm in a position now where a lot of the jobs that I'm applying for and I'm getting interviewed for, like they, they're looking to me not to take like a supporting role, but actually lead. And actually, they want me to know this stuff. Like I'm supposed to know because because you have to understand that your personal little project that you might be doing on the weekend yeah that's great you want to play with play around with some stuff and like try stuff out that's the way you learn you should be doing that but when you do this professionally especially for projects that are going to be become like production code and people are going to pay money for it you do not have the luxury of just picking an arbitrary tool and i see a, I, unfortunately i see a lot of even architects like really fancy i mean i was working for this guy who or I am still, I'm leaving Ticketmaster now, but I, the the architect there, he was talking about Preact and he was preaching, oh, we shouldn't be moving from React to Preact. And I mean, I, I told him like, why why are you suggesting this? And he said, oh, it's more performance, it's better, it's more lightweight. And I said, yeah, that's great, but do you really need that extra performance? I mean, the performance you're talking about is like at the rendering level, at how fast React is going to move on your page. Maybe we should bench, you know, before you jump on this very small little port of React, which has like, you know, originally React was, you know, they have all these people working on it, and this guy came along and kind of optimized that. Like, and I said, like, do you want to make take that risk for this entire, you know, for all of the products that Ticketmaster have and preach this when you have, like, it's still kind of early and you have no real logical reason to do it. It's an emotional move because you think that performance is the most important thing and like lightweight and like all these awesome buzzwords and I, and I, you know, I didn't really get a, a straight answer out of him because, you know, he's a... He's a architect, and architects are never wrong. Even when they are wrong, they say that you know they really they they they're not wrong. Just never you know. Way I suppose when you get to a certain level of income and a certain t title, you start stop being wrong. And so, said and I like a few months later, by the time he forgot our conversation. Uh, I, uh, he actually had he explained to our teams that you know, oh, there were some issues and like there were some reasons that maybe Preact isn't the right thing for 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 Ticketmaster and oh yeah, we'll we'll not go this road. And I kind of go, well, okay. So you, you, it turns out that there were some issues. And I'm not trying to bash him in any way because I've made a lot of mistakes as well. But I just want to illustrate that this idea that, you know, just because you get more experience, you stop buying into stuff just, bec just because that never goes away. You have to continuously kind of check yourself against, okay, is this really the right bet I'm making? Because as I said, if it's just your own project, then there's no risk. You can just throw it away. But if you're doing making this decision for 
a company, remember, they don't have the luxury to just throw away code. I mean, they can't. You can't just switch out a fundamental framework that your entire application builds on because you have all these stakeholders and you're making this money and like if you just throw it out you risk uh, breaking things and it's going to cost the company a lot of money to do this so make sure that you know what you're talking about if you're in a position where you're going to make a decision based on something you know talk to people like talk to people like myself or people who know even more because there are people who have made these mistakes and I argue that like some a lot of people bash talk Java because it's this horrible experience and it's so old and I'm like yeah I know that it is but a lot of especially here in Gotham a lot of companies go towards Java and they do that because it's a proven platform they <clears throat> they want to have something that they can build a business on and that's where it is I mean we developers we want to make play with the new cool tools but the companies they don't they don't care the, you, your clients don't care what you build stuff with unless they have like a vested interest in something but very rarely they don't care they want you to produce a value they want you to produce something that they can make money from they want something that works so most people go with Java because in their minds that's the stable platform and the same thing with .NET and C Sharp and like that stuff it's stable it's proven they know that you know it might not be so sexy for us developers but for the business it makes sense and that's actually why I think Kotlin and Swift are going to give them a run for their money. Like Java and C Sharp should be watching out fairly like a lot for, especially for Kotlin, because their ambition of that project is wow. Uh, because in essence, these languages bring to the table like the great development experience, but say it's it still uses the technology that these like large corporations favor because of the stability. So it's going to be interesting. But yeah, that's my little rant about all that stuff. And I watched, I've looked through this other stuff, and I don't think there's anything else I'm going to look at today. I, I'm very picky with the content I look at. I kind of, I'm not, like, uh, I used to go crazy and go over everything all the time, but and like look read everything about everything but I just don't have that energy anymore and I kind of you start to realize that some stuff is going down the right route some stuff is going down the wrong down the wrong route and you kind of switch bit switch and go from reading about everything to reading about that stuff that's going to be relevant and you know stuff that you enjoy anywho uh, yeah so my end note here is going to be that just if you're ever in doubt what framework you're going to use for your front end, use React. Just don't even think about it. Use it. It's uh, it's so much better than the others. Like it's not even a competition. And I keep like I will gladly have that argument with anybody. And I find it very unlikely that somebody's going to come along and tell me really proved to me that one uh, that you know they made a really strong choice going with angular and it was a really informed decision and you know they have all these benefits they're not they're not going to be able to do that i have can abs I, I i find it highly unlikely same thing for view if you're going with view once again you're just doing that because uh, I, I argue you're just doing that because you're not you for whatever reason don't want to go with react and yeah, that's it basically.